Today we're going to be looking at using the bootstrap to create ARM images for devices such as pogo plugs or to get Debian running in a true root on your Android device. If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Okay, uh, we're going to be creating an image that will contain an ARM file system for use on different ARM devices and that can be chur rooted into on an Android device or any Linux device that you have root access to that is ARM based. Okay, so here we go. I am in a folder, it's an empty folder, there's nothing in here. I'm gonna create a folder in here, I'm just gonna call it MNT. Uh, we're gonna create the image first, then I'm gonna mount it to that folder we just created called MNT. So I'm gonna use, there's different techniques to create file uh, images. I'm just going to use uh, DD. Again, uh, just like last tutorial, pretty much everything I'm going to do uh, in this tutorial requires sudo or root access, so I'm just logged in as root on my system. Some people frown upon that. If you prefer, just you put sudo before most of the commands. So uh, I'm going to say um, DD. I'll give it a BS of 512. I'm assuming that you're somewhat familiar with the DD command. Um, but what we're going to do here is give it a count. So if we don't give it a count, it's just going to keep creating an image that goes on and on and on and on. And we're going to say 5400000, looking at my notes. Uh, and I have that written down as approximately a 2 gig file. Um, there might be another way to write that out that's easier to remember, but that's what I have in my notes. Uh, so now we're going to need to give it an in file. Uh, so this is information we're going to put into the image. And we don't want to put really any real image uh, information in there. So we're just going to use the device zero. This is just going to fill the image with a bunch of zeros. Uh, and then we're going to say out uh, or of out file equals um, and whatever we want to name the image. I'll call it Debian underscore arm so that I know it's an arm image dot img. I'll hit enter. Give it a few seconds here, hopefully it shouldn't take too long, and we will have a 2 gig image approximately, um, which we then will have to uh, format, and then mount, and then we will uh, go in there and create, so yeah, well, a little bigger than I thought, 2.8 gigs, so almost 3 gigs, so you can tweak this number somewhat. That gives us uh, enough room for the file system and room to do install the software that we want on there. Uh, so now I'm going to use mkfs.ext4 because I want to make an ext4 um, file system and I'm going to point it at that image. We're not creating, um, so right here it's telling us there's no uh, block special device. That's because we didn't create a partition. The whole image is going to be a partition. Depending on what you're doing, and I've gone over this in previous tutorials, you're, you may or may not want partitions in there. We don't want part, you know, separate partitions. We just want to write to, like if you think of this image as a hard drive, we're writing directly to the hard drive without any permission or uh, partitions. Okay, so now we can mount it, mount. And again, don't forget, I'm running as root. If you're not, you have to put sudo before these commands. I'm gonna dash O uh, loop. We're going to loop back to the image. The image is called Debian underscore arm.img. And where do I want to mount it? I'm just going to mount it in the folder I just created at the beginning of the tutorial called MNT. It is in the current folder. If I list what out what is inside that folder, it just has the lost and found folder, which has to do with ext and how it writes to the files. Another tutorial I'll talk about that. Okay, so at this point, there's a few things that uh, I'm going to want to install. I'm going to want to install the bootstrap, which I already have installed, uh, and a few other tools for once it's done being installed, which I'll explain more about uh, momentarily, or once after we do our install. I'm going to say aptitude or apt-get, whatever you use, uh, install um, bin fmt-support qmu, which is an emulator, and then qmu dash, uh, I'm sorry, user dash static, and then if you don't already have it installed, the bootstrap as well, which I do have installed. In fact, I probably might have this stuff installed. Yeah, looks like I already have all that stuff installed, because I've done this before. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use the bootstrap, similar to what we did in a previous tutorial, the bootstrap, but since we're not using uh, you know, a regular 32-bit or 64-bit um, you know, standard desktop processor, I'm going to say foreign dash dash and I'm going to tell it I want to do an architecture of RML. <clears throat> now the version of Debian I want to install, I'm just going to do SID which is unstable. Depending on what you're using this for, you may want SID, you may want we Wheezy, um, Lenny's the old stable. I I've been using unstable for so long, I've been using SID, I don't even know what other versions are at, but I'm going to say SID. Uh, where I want to install to, MNT, the folder that is within the folder we're in. Um, and then you can tell it what server you want to uh, install from. Uh, if you leave it blank, it should just use the default Debian servers, and it is. So it's going to uh, Debian.org, and it's going there, and it's going, ah, okay, he wants to do a um, the bootstrap install, Oh, of SID, uh, but he wants an ARM, so it redirects me to the right folder, and it starts downloading all these packages. Um, just like the last tutorial, I'll try to talk here while this is downloading. I may pause the video, since this will probably take a little bit. Again, right now, we're doing, we're downloading all these files to this folder, MNT, not in the root directory, but within the folder we're in that we just created. Again, that's what we created. It may be called something else. Um, but which that is actually the image because we mounted our image to that folder. So right now it's putting all these files, all these um, minimal tools that the Debian system needs to run. Um, and actually there's ways to make it even more minimal, but we'll consider this minimal for now, um, into this image, at which point we can churroot root into um, on an ARM system. Now, I should also mention there's two ways of doing this. I like doing it this way, and um, this way I'm going to be able to do everything right here on my desktop. Most instructions will tell you to do a two-stage install, where you start, it pulls down the files, but then you load that file onto an ARM device, and then start doing whatever you need to do from there. It does the rest of the install um, with the second stage. The way I'm doing it here is I'm pulling down all the stuff, all the all the the ARM files, which obviously can't run on my processor, on my desktop here, because I don't have an ARM processor, but that is why we installed QMU and those other, I pronounce it QMU, I'm not sure if that's really how you pronounce it, it's QEMU, um, which is a uh, virtual machine that supports different architectures. I've gone over it before in the past, where we actually did an ARM install using it, using the Debian net CD. So we're kind of doing the same thing here, but without that CD and actually without needing QMU to pull down the file system. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the, I'm going to churroot root into it, which would normally not work, but I'm going to show you how you can access an ARM file system from a regular processor right now. There are some long commands that I'm going to mostly copy and paste, uh, but I'll put them in a link in the description so that you can have those. Um, so we did that. Okay, so now I'm going to say copy from my current system, uh, the USR bin folder, the qmu-arm-static file that we uh, installed, and I'm going to copy that into the new file system we just created underneath MNT USR bin. Boom, so we put that there. Now we're going to set some some settings on our system so that when we chur root into that, it's going to use that emulator that's in that image so that we can we can actually run stuff in the chur root even though it's an ARM system on our this is a 64-bit uh, AMD processor. So, this is what we're going to type. And I'm going to do some copy and pasting. So, case sensitive here, Debian frontend equals non-interactive. 
Then we're going to say deb config non interactive scene true. And then we're going to say lc all equals c, language equals c, lang equals c. Again, this is all I got off the internet a while ago. I'm not even sure what a lot of this means. Then we're going to put in our churroot command, the directory where our, our debootstrap was installed to. And then we're going to say debootstrap, debootstrap, dash dash second dash stage. And I'm going to hit enter. And I got a failed. Failed to run command, no such directory. I spell everything right? Nope, I did not. I think there's, there needs to be a T there. The boot strap. There we go. So as I was saying, we did the first stage of installation, and most tutorials will tell you to do that, then load this file system onto an ARM device, and continue the second stage there. One, I like to do everything on my desktop when I can. Two, I'm just going to assume that it's faster doing it this way, because my desktop's faster than, let's say, my phone. Um, so the, what we had to do to do that was just install QMU, copy the file over, and then add in these settings here, which again will be in a um, link in the description of this video. Okay, so now it's doing the second stage. Before it pulled down files, now it's actually doing, it's churrooting in and doing the second stage install. Uh, at this point, I'm going to pause the video and we will continue from there because this will probably take uh, a little while for it to unpackage everything. Okay, that took a couple of minutes, probably around five minutes, probably a little bit less. Um, downloaded and configured a bunch of stuff. Now we're going to do another command similar. So I'm going to hit up arrow because it's all the same up until uh, this last part here. We already did the second stage. And this time when we chur root into the thing, we're going to say uh, d pkg dash dash configure dash a. Okay, so now that we've done that, we should be able to chur root into the system. So let's do chur root, the folder that we want to chur root into. And I'm pretty sure if I type just bash, it's not going to work. Oh, also if we type chur root correctly. Oh, it did work. Okay. Um, so let's, let's see. Let's uh, think of a command. Uh, let's do aptitude get aptitude, get aptitude install well, let's check something before I try running that. Cat, etc, apt, source list. Notice there's nothing in there. So uh, what we would want to do is add the server that we want to download from. Uh, and let me just see. I think that we should just be able to do one. I think nano will be installed by default. And in here, let's say deb http forward slash forward slash, I think it's ftp.debian.org forward slash, I think it's Debian uh, Sid main, I think. We'll give that a try. Otherwise, I have to look at my notes. Now if we do aptitude update, we'll see if that's correct. Yep, seems to be working. And it knows based on our system that we are um, an ARM system, so it's going to download the repository uh, list for ARM. But at this point I could do aptitude uh, install nmap. And we'll download install nmap. Now remember, everything I'm doing right here is being done on an ARM file system and it's made possible to chur root into an ARM file system with this debootstrap install because we did the QMU uh, again I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right QEMU uh, uh, emulator uh, file and we copied that over so that when we chur root into it uh, the chur root knows to use that so that we can run these ARM programs on a non-ARM 
processor. So right now, again, we're working with inside the image we created. Install whatever packages you think you'll want on your phone, and then you can copy this to your SD card, or if you have enough storage on the memory on the phone, you can do that. You can mount it, and if you have root access, you can mount it, and then you can use, um, if you have a full version of BusyBox on there, if not, lots of times a lot of Android devices have a slimmed down version of BusyBox. You'll have to get the, the full version, which you can find online, um, which has Chirroot built into it. You Chirroot into this Debian image after mounting it, and um, you have a full running Debian system on your phone. Um, and uh, obviously you can't run uh, the standard GUI applications in the Android interface, but there are ways to kill the Android uh, zygote, which is the, the process that starts the Android interface. You can kill that, and if you know about Xorg configuration files, you can configure it and actually get Xorg running. And actually on any Android device, with a little bit of tweaking and an image like this that we just created, you can have a full Debian um, desktop running on any Android device. Uh, the biggest drawback would be um, I, getting video drivers to work because if you do start up a, you know, Xorg, on, at least when I've done it on, um, on my Android devices and I have done it on both my tablets, I haven't really done it on my phone because uh, I, I don't want to mess up my phone even though I, you really, you know, I have everything backed up. Um, Frame buffer is the way that I go for displaying Xorg, so you're not going to get any acceleration, and good luck getting the touchscreen calibrated. Um, I have not been able to really figure that out, but I have been able to uh, get things like mPlayer and at least the desktop open and other applications open to, you know, on an Android device uh, using the frame buffer but actually having a full working desktop, I myself have not been, but I, that's also, I don't know very much about the Xorg configuration file, because I've only been using Linux for, I don't know, eight, nine years now, and pretty much my entire, you know, the last seven years at least, you don't have to touch the configuration file. Uh, Linux is so good at configuring everything for you for most hardware. Um, so this is gonna take a little while to install, so there's a lot of packages required for uh, the uh, Nmap that were, wasn't installed yet. But that's it. Very simple, uh, mostly similar, very similar to, to the previous video, uh, but with the add a little using the QMU to be able to access that cheroot on a uh, standard desktop. I encourage you to play around with this. I know I personally love having Debian installed on my Android device. Um, what I normally do is I write out scripts uh, on the Android device that automatically mount the cheroot and run a script and then save the output as HTML and open up uh, Firefox. So on my phone, for example, I open up a terminal, I use um, ConnectBot, uh, and then I just, I SU into root, and I can type in scan, and my script automatically does a double ARP scan grabbing uh, a range of IPs on the local network uh, and then outputs those as HTML to a file and opens up Firefox. And at that point, the script continues running in the background, doing different scans like Nmap and other network scans, continuously updating the HTML file, which I then have the GUI interface uh, through, uh, as HTML. That uh, In that case, I use Firefox, so I have my script open up Firefox. Um, so at that point, like it scans, if it finds uh, a server running on port 80, it gives me a link, I can click on that and the browser opens it up. Very, very convenient. I mean, a lot of which you can do with a full version of BusyBox, um, <coughs> but it's nice to have the full Debian system for that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna let this go. Tutorial's pretty much over. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, this, this video, was uh, what was voted on with my Patreon viewers. If you enjoy my tutorials and you want to support my videos, my work, and my website, and continue seeing videos, think about contributing to my Patreon account over at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Um, 
I much appreciate it. Plus, as a patron, there are different reward levels, one of which is you get to vote on what series I'm doing next. And this time around, it was voted on the bootstrap. So I've done, this is the second video on the bootstrap. I've got at least one more, uh, which is gonna be a simple to bootstrap um, through uh, Grellum, uh, Gremel, Gremel, I think is how you pronounce. It's a great, great live CD, Debian based uh, for, um, I hate using power users, you know, but it's it's very lightweight and very powerful with lots of great scripts on it. So I'll probably look at that in the next tutorial. And so if you like this topic, great. If you like other topics and want to have a say, consider going to my Patreon account. And um, there's different levels with different amounts of input that you can give. So, and of course you get stuff as well, including early access to videos and downloadable links to ad-free uh, AUG videos. So now that I've promoted myself enough, I want to say have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day. It's got a 250 gig hard drive, which I love. Um, but they also have a uh, slightly cheaper uh, sort of AP model. Um, if you need it to at this point, you can press this little circle uh, with the person in it. That's uh, uh, accessibility things. It has things like on screen reader. And you can choose, you know, on screen keyboard. And there's a few options for the keyboard there. We can close that. And you can see the, uh, the GNOME keyboard here starts up. Um,